Good evening and welcome to Virtual Wednesdays. My name is Devin Malone and I'm the Director of Public Programs and Community Engagement at the Fine Arts Museums of San Francisco. Thank you so much for joining today's program, Sergeant and Flamenco. For today's program, Emma Acker, Associate Curator of American Art, will provide an overview of John Singer Sargent's long-standing interest in Spanish music and dance, as well as discuss Sargent's portrayals of flamenco performers and the acclaimed Spanish dancer, Carmen Dase Moreno, known as La Carmencita. After the presentation, Theater Flamenco of San Francisco will speak on their origins and the vibrant Bay Area flamenco community. To share more about our speakers, Emma Acker is Associate Curator of American Art and the Coordinating Curator for our presentation of Sargent in Spain. Among the exhibitions she has organized at the museums, Cult of the Machine was identified by the Washington Post as one of the top two presentations of American art in 2018. Acker, who worked previously at the Getty Research Institute and the National Gallery of Art, has authored numerous publications and is the recipient of fellowships from Brown University, University of Southern California, the National Gallery of Art, the English Speaking Union, the Paul Mellon Center for Studies in British Art, and the University of St. Andrews. Founded in 1966, Theater Flamenco of San Francisco supports the cultural enrichment of the San Francisco Bay Area through the presentation and promotion of flamenco, an art form pioneered by the Roma inhabitants of Andalusia in Southern Spain. It is the second oldest dance company in San Francisco and one of the longest continually running flamenco performance groups outside of Spain. Theater Flamenco produces imaginative shows in collaboration with local and international artists, offers classes with world famous flamenco artists to students of all ages and abilities, and maintains strong ties to flamenco artists around the world. The company is located in the vibrant Mission District of San Francisco. Join me in welcoming Emma as well as Theater Flamenco of San Francisco, and thank you once again for joining us. Welcome everyone. It's great to be here with you this evening. I'm Emma Acker. I'm the Associate Curator of American Art at the Fine Arts Museums of San Francisco. And I'm really delighted to speak about Spanish dance and music in the context of our exhibition, Sergeant in Spain, which is on view at the Legion of Honor. It's been up since February 11th of this year and closes in just under two weeks, May 14th. So if you haven't seen it already, please do go and see it. And even if you have, um, this is actually the first exhibition to explore the influence of Spanish culture on the really dynamic visual practice of John Singer Sargent. And it's been organized by Sarah Cash, an Associate Curator of American and British Paintings at the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C., and by leading Sargent scholars Richard Ormond and Elaine Kilmurray. And the exhibition really um, explores Sargent's fascination with Spanish culture, um, which he embraced over the course of seven visits taken over a period of 33 years between 1879 and 1912, when he observed and depicted the country's museums, palaces, churches, and gardens, its magnificent urban and rural landscapes, and the daily activities and rich cultural traditions of its people. And as you'll see in the exhibition, it really showcases a series of his dazzling oils and watercolors and pencil studies, as well as never before exhibited photographs from his personal collection that really give one wonderful insights into his creative practice. And we feature this map at the entrance to the exhibition, which really allows visitors to kind of trace Sargent's wide ranging travels throughout Spain. He visited over 26 different towns and cities in total. And I think one of the great pleasures of the show is that it really gives us the vicarious thrill of travel. We're in a sense able to visit many of the destinations uh, on the map through the artworks on view and to really see Spain through Sargent's eyes. And a key influence on his work from this period that's explored at length 
in the exhibition is that of Spanish dance and music. And here you see Sargent's Spanish Roma dancer of about 1879 to 80. And I'm just gonna say a few words about the exhibition's sensitivity toward an interpretation of Sargent's portrayals of Spanish Roma people. Um, in 2021, the National Gallery convened an advisory panel consisting of members of the Roma and Spanish Roma communities, as well as scholars of the Spanish Roma and other internal and external participants. And the conversations that came out of these meetings have really guided the way that the exhibition has framed Sargent's depictions of Roma people, a cultural group that has historically been marginalized and often are underrepresented and misrepresented. And very critically, we retitled several works in the exhibition that had formerly incorporated the outdated and derogatory term gypsy. And so there's exhibition wall texts and in our presentation, audio tour stops featuring the perspectives of Roma contributors. And I think this really adds a very um, fresh kind of lens on uh, these portrayals. Um, so what we now think of as flamenco music really began in the 19th century in the south of Spain, in Andalusia, but its roots in Spanish Roma culture are centuries old. And this is a highly melodic and percussive and rhythmic art form consisting of three major components, el baile or the dance, el cante or singing, and el toque or guitar playing. And initially these performances were done in very intimate domestic settings um, for small groups of family and friends within the Roma community. Um, but then with the emergence of what were known as cafe cantantes or singing cafes that popped up in the mid to late 1800s, hundreds. This um, performance style became professionalized and known outside the Roma community. Um, and these were commercial spaces featuring a stage at one end, a bar at the other, and tables and chairs in between, such as the one you see here on the right, um, this very popular Cafe Cantante in Seville, um, El Borracho. And this is the type of space where Sargent would have likely seen live flamenco performed during his first extended trip to Spain in 1879. Sargent was actually himself a very skilled musician. He played piano expertly as well as guitar and banjo, and he was really passionate about a whole range of musical genres, but none more so than flamenco. He actually had a really impressive collection of flamenco records. Um, he shared many of them with his friend and patron, the American art collector Isabella Stewart Gardner. I'm showing you one um, that's now in the collection of the Gardner Museum in Boston on the left. She actually inscribed them with her own sort of um, sentiments about the records. And this one, unfortunately, um, has in her handwriting the word bad. Um, but we've featured a whole range of uh, songs from these records um, in a sort of curated playlist of Sargent's favorite flamenco tunes in this gallery, Rosecrans Court, at the exhibition that focuses on the influence of Spanish dance and music. You can also download the soundtrack via a QR code in the gallery, um, also on our website, uh, FAMSF. Uh, famsf.org, you can find this um, playlist as well. Um, so let's speak a little bit about Sargent's kind of tour de force portrayal of flamenco performance, his El Haleo, which caused an absolute sensation when he exhibited it at the 1882 Paris Salon. And he really captured the kind of intensity of feeling physical gestures and sensory richness that we associate with this very celebrated art form. Haleos are actually expressions of praise that are offered to performers to encourage them, including shouts of ole. And this is a word that's inscribed on the wall in the background of the composition at the right. Also palmas or hand claps and pitos or finger snaps. So here Sargent really has conveyed the illusion that we're witnessing an actual performance, a live performance. Um, he sort of thrust us into the scene with a sense of urgency and immediacy, but in fact, nothing could have been less spontaneously executed. Um, this painting is based on Sargent's memories of flamenco performance. He painted it over um, uh, three years after this initial visit to Spain in his Paris studio. Um, working with pencil studies he made um, from posed models. 
Um, Isabella Stewart Gardner uh, was very enthusiastic about the painting and had long admired it um, and was able to acquire it in 1914 from a relative through marriage. And it's now a kind of centerpiece of the Gardner Museum in Boston. It's installed in what's known as the Spanish cloister of what was her Boston home and is now the museum um, under this elaborate Islamic inspired arched alcove. And for generations of viewers, it's really come to kind of epitomize um, Spanish dance and music and, and flamenco in particular. Um, so the painting unfortunately doesn't travel, but the Gardner Museum has lent a series of the really expressive studies that Sargent made for the work. I'm showing you two examples here, such a sense of dynamism and motion. Um, we also feature the marvelous watercolor you see at left from the Dallas Museum of Arts collection. And at right, you see this wonderful pen and ink study after El Haleo that Sargent made for a book about Spanish dance and music. Um, here are two more flamenco inspired scenes uh, from the exhibition study for the Spanish dance at left and the Spanish dance at right. And look at the shifts in both sort of palette and composition from the study to the finished work. It really shows Sargent experimenting um, and gives us again this wonderful sort of window into his artistic process. Now I'm gonna speak briefly about another really profound inspiration for Sargent pertaining to Spanish dance. Um, and that is the acclaimed Spanish dancer, Carmen Dauset Moreno, also known as La Carmencita. And here you see Sargent's full length oil portrayal of her from 1890 on the right, a photograph of her on the left. Um, she was an absolute hit when she kind of made her debut at the 1889 Paris Exposition Universelle. Um, and she was not actually a flamenco dancer. She was trained in the Escuela Bolero or Bolero School that emerged in the 18th century in Spain and has a lot of similarities with classical ballet. Although it incorporated um, castanets and soft slippers or zapatillas rather than point shoes. Though as you can see in Sargent's portrait of Carmencita, she also liked to perform in heels. She then went on to travel United States performing with vaudeville troops between 1889 and 1895, doing these 10 minute solo acts in an evening packed with all manner of performers, comedians, acrobats, jugglers, even animal acts. And she was a celebrity both here and in Europe. Um, she um, would also perform at soirees in New York City hosted by Sargent and other artist friends like William Merritt Chase, who also famously painted her portrait as you see on the left. Um, she's shown performing for Isabella Stewart Gardner on the right in her Boston home. Apparently it was a very scandalizing performance um, for Gardner. Although completely tamed by today's standards, her dancing was seen to be very sensual. She showed more than a glimpse of her stockings and her association with vaudeville also raised some eyebrows. Um, she uh, was, her likeness was used to advertise a popular brand of US cigars, as you can see on the right. And Sargent's portrait of her um, from 1890 graced the cover of Harper's Weekly. So she was a complete, um, uh, fan favorites on both sides of the Atlantic at this time, which I think really points to the vogue for all things Spanish at this time. She also, we think, was the first woman to appear before a motion picture camera in the United States in a short black and white film produced in 1895 at Thomas Edison Studios in New Jersey. Um, and I will show you a clip and you can really get a sense of her dancing here. And what's interesting is that the dress that she's shown wearing in the film is very similar to the one that you see in Sargent's portrait of her on the right. 
she's just absolutely resplendent in this shimmering yellow gown, which really kind of scintillates against this neutral backdrop and sort of um, nod to Sargent's great aesthetic hero, um, the Spanish Baroque era, Diego Velasquez, in terms of the composition. And she has this really sort of um, proud, almost defiant expression with her eyebrows arched. She gazes right out at the viewer, her hands on her hips, her leg thrust forward. She appears poised and confident and really ready to spring into action. Um, whereas in the painting on the left, she's shown mid-performance with her arm outstretched, her head sort of tossed to one side. Um, really, Sargent has captured her celebrated vitality and dynamism. And I'll note that Sargent painted these works, um, not as commissions, but simply because he was so enamored of his subject. Um, and so with that, um, I'll conclude my portion of the presentation this evening. And I'm really thrilled to turn it over to Carola, who's going to speak more about the Theater Flamenco of San Francisco and do a live demonstration of some flamenco steps for us. So um, with that, um, I'll turn it over to you. And thank you so much. Clara, a dancer from New York, but then she moved here to San Francisco and was funded to present flamenco, but actually the four art form from Spain, flamenco, eh, classic Spanish folklore, Spanish folklore, and jotas. They used to do all these four uh, forms. And then after Adela, she was the director, she passed it to Miguel Santos, that he, that's the one I, I was working with. And he had it for almost oh, like 20 years something. And then he, he passed over to me. I've been, I have been director of Teatro Flamenco since 2006. And we present flamenco performance with innovative <laughs> thematics performance. Actually, we are having next Saturday, not this, the May 13 or 57 home season, that since the COVID we, we couldn't make any shows. And finally, we are returning to the theater. It will be at the Herbst Theater in San Francisco. And it's one performance only. So now I want to talk a little bit more about flamenco, and then we come back to my, the theater flamenco. Flamenco is an art, very rich art from, from Andalusia, Spain, that is a mix of culture, uh, Arab, Jewish, and Gypsy, uh, and all these uh, cultures, they, they join in Andalusia, and that's how we become flamenco. And it's really powerful. Like for me, when I start, uh, when I hear f the first time I hear flamenco in a CD, the, the cante, the, the singing, and I get it like mesmerized. I was like, ah, what is this? Looking, try to find out what was it. I used to dance. I'm from Mexico, from Torreón, Mexico, and I grew up in Guadalajara. And I started dancing when I was almost like six years old. But it was more uh, Sevillanas, more folklore dance. But then when I hear the flamenco, that was, I was like, this is what I, I want to do. And then I look forward and I saw uh, a flamenco performers in Mexico City. And then after that, I moved there. And since now, I'm <laughs> doing <laughs> flamenco. That is my <laughs> passion, passion. And it's... It's incredible art form that you can express all your emotions, any feeling you have, you throw it out through flamenco. It's a beautiful art form. And the most important in flamenco is the singing. And we have different, uh, we call it palos, but it's different rhythms. 
and I can show a little bit, uh, the palmas, no? We have the bead, uh, for example, the 12 bead that is in a lot of the palos of flamenco, for example, Muleria, Solea. I'm going to show a little bit. Sería, eh, See, this is the beat, oh, one, two, three. Oh. Then we have the seguidilla rhythm that is on uh, five. Mm, And then we have the four beat eh, for tangos, tiento, tanguillo. Sería. This is more common. And also eh, on flamenco, eh, we do a lot of eh, hands, flores, we call it. Flores. That I can show you a little bit uh, the the arms, no? With the with the music, I'm gonna play a little bit music to show you how we use the arm. And actually, this music is from Juani de la Isla. That he will he's from Cadiz, from Andalusia, and he will be playing in our performance on for or upcoming home season on May 13th. He's an amazing guitar player. So I show you here a little bit of the hands. We can roll here. And then for the arms, you can go here. Okay, that was the <laughs> a little bit of the arms, no? It's, and now, uh, before it was more for the women, but now with the flores, no? I'm talking about, no? Before the men, they used to work more with the hands like that, but now everybody uses the hands, no problem. And now I show you a little bit, we call it uh, food. Uh, Zapateado, escobillas, the footwork. And there is uh, the technique planta, the ball of the feet. And then we have the heel. And then golpe. Látigo. And then combination, all of these, we call it escobillas.
So, escobillas, we use it a lot in the, when we are performing, no, the dance. Usually we do uh, the singing part, then it's a little bit of footwork, singing, and then more footwork. Oh, look, I cannot talk anymore. <laughs> no. Eh, ¿Qué más les puedo contar? <laughs> the, talking about a little more of the company. Teatro Flamenco is the, the second oldest company after the San Francisco Ballet. We are the second oldest company that has been doing flamenco. In, I think, no, we were the first one doing flamenco in the United States. And then since then, we've been doing uh, the home season every year until the, until the COVID. And then after the COVID, we get three years that we will do our first home season. We also teach to the kids and young generation, actually all, all ages and gender. <laughs> we have a studio in San, Fran in San Francisco, in the Mission District, and we teach there most, mostly every day. And we do a small, like, tablado style performing where we invite some of our students plus local artists and guest artists sometimes from Spain to join and we all with community you know we share the stage and we perform once a month something like that sometimes more sometimes less <laughs> but it's beautiful not to share this art form with all the community here in San Francisco that I think is a very rich city, you know, in the arts. Hopefully we get more and more art because it's been uh, very nice to be here, you know, in this city. <laughs> sí? uh, now I'm going to demonstrate oh, yeah, está bien? another full dance. Okay. <laughs> ¿Qué hago? ¿El baile completo? Eh. Ok, this is more eh, a happy dance that you perform more like in Paris, es tango, rumba. ¿Eh? ¿No me llona? <risa> no, no.
Muchas gracias. Thank you so much for having me here again. Hopefully, I will see you everybody in Herb Theater or around any other performance here in San Francisco. Thank you so much.